This muscle right here is called the piriformis and its name means pear-shaped, which is a really good name if you sit and look at this because imagine this being like the body or the flesh of the pear that you'd bite into. And then right here we can see the stem of the pear. Now it belongs to a group of muscles known as the deep hip rotators. And I mean, you're not going to be called the deep hip rotators unless you do some form of rotation. But before we get there, I want you to understand that there are two gluteal muscles that have been removed so we can get a really good view of the piriformis. So we can see gluteus minimus here, which is the, you know, the smallest glute muscle and but gluteus medius would be coming up top and then gluteus maximus would be covering this entire thing and both of those have been removed and that's what allows us to see the piriformis as it's coming from the sacrum over to that greater trochanter of the femur but again it belongs to a muscle group known as the deep hip rotator so i mean it's got to do something along those lines right and well it does the the piriformis along with <laughs> every other one of the deep hip rotators are going to perform what's called external rotation of the hip. So external rotation of the hip is where you are, you know, it's kind of like if you put your, think, at least for me, I think about driving a car, right? So you have your foot on the gas pedal and as you rotate it from over to the gas, right? So or you have it on the brake and then you're rotating it over to the gas pedal. Is you're rotating it to the right because you're using your right foot, you would be performing external rotation. You're like, Justin, that's in the foot. What are you talking about? Well, in reality, you're actually rotating all the way up at the hip. The foot is just along for the ride. You know, like if you treat my arm here, I mean, I know this is the shoulder, but I want you to imagine the same thing applies for your hip. If you were to rotate it like this outwardly, that is external rotation. Also, sometimes you may hear it be called lateral rotation. You are going and rotating in on that axis, you are rotating outwardly. And that's exactly what the piriformis is going to perform. But there's another one that it performs, and this one's a little less intuitive. It also performs what is known as abduction of a flexed hip. And the best way I can describe this is that it's like a dog peeing. <laughs> what I mean is, I mean, imagine you, you flex your hip, and then you kind of like do this frog leg position, right? So it's like you're in flexion, and then you're lifting up. That is what is going to be abduction of a flexed hip hip because what happens and it's hard to tell from this image but as the hip flexes this greater trochanter is going to rotate backwards right posteriorly and then all of a sudden the piriformis is now it has the leverage to just lift that hip into abduction kind of interesting kind of interesting how that works now Everything you're seeing here is part of a 100% free Ken Hub article. We're gonna go ahead and leave a link down in the description below for you to go ahead and check this out because our articles are just stuffed to the brim with information. And this one has everything and anything you could possibly want to learn surrounding the piriformis, as well as the other deep hip rotators, as well as the nerves. It's all here. It's all here. I encourage you to go check it out. Again, we're gonna leave a link down in the description below, but. Hopefully you enjoyed this video and I will see you in the next one.